So asking questions about things we don't know is another way to learn new information. And so we want to teach them how to access rigorous content. And that's very important when it comes to test taking because a lot of times questions are structured in a way that students don't understand. So if they understand the reasoning behind question and the vocabulary, this helps them to do better um, on test. So acquiring that academic vocabulary is the vocabulary they encounter in their textbooks, also the, the uh, vocabulary that they encounter on different types of testing. Um, it's true there's no bad question, but some questions are just better than other questions. And so there are three levels of questions in academic vocabulary that you should be familiar with. And so the three levels of questioning are, we have the first floor, they use different models, so I presented this one the first floor. The second floor, basically the first floor is basic. You're recalling facts. Um, it's right there, I'm gonna give you a strategy to use with your students um, and your children later on. The second floor is they're processing information. And that third floor is where they're making connections and judgments. And this is Arthur Costa. Um, he, de he developed this system for levels in questioning. And so if we learn to use these categories, we become better thinkers. Helps them become better thinkers, critical readers, and writers. So what's the big deal? Learning takes place when we produce and not reproduce. When we are producing things, recognizing a higher level thinking question, colleges want you to be able to do this. And so one of the um, points of Abbott is to prepare students for college readiness. So even if they decide not to go to college, they're still prepared for whatever they decide to do. And so the first level, and I'm going to go ahead and give you this sheet since most are parents, um, we talk about cost of signal words. And so the first level, <laughs> so that first level we talked about was the recall. I'm trying to stay out of the light. The first level was the recall. And so when we do the training, we teach the students that basically this is factual information. It is found right in the textbook. So we use a three-finger strategy. The first finger stands for you can put your finger right on it. If you're using a computer, you don't have to look for it. You don't have to process it. You can find the answer and cut, cut and paste it right off of the um, page and put it onto another. So it's no processing. It's no changing around. And it's, it can usually be also a one or two answer um, response to the question. Next, I'm sorry. And so, once again, it's gathering and recalling. It doesn't require you to do much else than to read the page and find the information. Um, so these are some of the level one questions that they start with. Define, describe, identify, list, name, observe, recite, scan, explain, review, locate, and paraphrase. So if I were to ask you to list the planets, basically, most students can open up their science textbook if they can't recall it and find it listed somewhere in the textbook. They wouldn't have to hunt for it. It's going to be right there on the page. And so how old was George Washington? Oh, that's the answer. If they're reading their textbook, they can find it right there or do the processing with the year he was born until the year he died. Um, what is your name? Recall, no thought process behind it. So these are not the kind that we want them to use. They start there, and they're good for helping to build background with certain students um, or in a content area, but we want to move them to the next level. Okay, next. So the next one is level two, and this is where we process information. Usually the information may come from two different sources or two different places within a source. So if you're looking at maybe a two-page um, story that the kids are reading in class from a worksheet. They may have to use information from the first paragraph, with information from the third or fourth paragraph, and process that information to come up with an answer. It's not right there on the page. It's not going to say it. They're not going to find it just by pointing to it. They're going to have to process it. They're going to have to do some analyzing. And so questions start with analyze, compare, group, infer, contrast, sequence, retell, synthesize, sort, diagram, or summarize. And I'm going to give you some examples of that. So when we do the first one, we said the first finger is where? Right on the page. So this time you're using your source plus your brain because you're going to have to process this information. So you've read some information in your science textbook 
or whatever um, resource the teacher has provided, but now you're having to process that. You're having to think about it and come up with an answer. You're having to make an inference because the answer may not be spelled out directly on the page. So now the level of thinking is increasing. So what is unique about you? You're not going to find that in the textbook. That's something that you know. So you can answer that question. And maybe somebody else could answer it too, but specifically you could answer that question. These are questions that require you to think a little bit harder. So you're, the level of processing is moving up. Who is a better leader, George Washington or John Adams? So why do you think this will be a level two question? What's the difference here? What are they asking you to do with these two people? Compare. You're comparing. So now they're having to, they're going to compare information they know about George Washington with information about John Adams. So therefore, it's not right there in front of them. They have to read. They have to find the information. They have to process it. They have to think about it in order to come up with an answer. And then we have the evaluative questions or our level three questions. These are the questions that are asking you to make a judgment. So when we think about this, this is all of you, strictly brain, your connections, but also prior knowledge based on one, two, and three. But you're really having to come up with the answer on your own. So you, your answer goes beyond the text. You're applying information. Um, your answer depends on personal experiences. So therefore, the experiences and connections your child can make with whatever the topic is that's being talked about. Um, you're asked for judgments made from the information or you're asked to give your opinion. And sometimes it's hard for um, students to form opinions, especially if they don't have the necessary background knowledge. And that's the form of essay question. So here we have apply, evaluate, imagine, judge, predict, speculate, compose, construct, or critique. And so that will be considered our level three. So with all three, we form a triangle. First finger is right there in the book, or you can copy and paste it with the click of a finger, so you have your one. Your second finger is book and brain, so there you have your two, you're taking level one, but now you're adding your brain to it, and your level three, that you take your two thumbs, you point to yourself, it comes from you. So it's a combination of all of that information, but you have to make a connection to it, and you have to make a judgment. That's cute. <laughs> One of my staff developer tricks. I can't take credit for it. Thank you, Abby. That's what they taught me. Okay. And so, do you agree that all athletes should be drug tested? Now, you know, some kids are into that, especially with the steroid things, the boys and whatnot. Um, what characters suffer the most? Um, they would have to think about this information. They would have to think about it. Now, my boys, especially, would probably take this and run with it. Um, but if they're reading a book, and we're going to get to that, um, talking about that later. But thinking about a character and putting, putting themselves in that character's place. First of all, they have to have an understanding of the character and what was going on with the character in that particular story. Or that particular famous person, a leader, what was going on in their life. And then they would have to make a judgment as to whether or not they wanted to be how they would react based on the information they have and then based on their experiences, what they know. And so real learning takes place here because it really takes you out of your comfort zone. Here, you really don't have to do a lot of thinking. But a lot of our kids stay here sometimes because they don't know how to ask the questions or process the information. So that level one, is, like I said, is that basic question that a teacher would ask because you know your kids need to build background. For some of my students, I know I would start off with a lot of level one questions with certain reading groups. But with another reading group, I could automatically start off with a level two question. And so it goes back to the vocabulary. And the one thing I did before I even taught the levels of thinking and questioning, we talked about the vocabulary. Because they can't ask the questions if they don't understand the vocabulary. And so I see some coworkers here. We did, well, I attempted to do the book study word nerds. And I did use it, but we introduced those, um, the vocabulary words using word nerds. And it's a process where they interact with these words, not just looking it up, but acting it out, talking about the words, using the words. Um, finding synonyms and anonyms, so you really have to build a vocabulary so they understand how to use the words and to ask the question. So level one, we're going to gather and recall information. That's when you're doing research, you know, you're gathering that information, you don't have to process anything, but you're just copying it down. You're taking those notes. Recall, you can give it back, no thought process <coughs> there. 
Level two is when you make sense of the information, when you start processing and analyzing it and giving one and two sentence responses. And then we apply and evaluate. This is really where it says you're applying the information. You're showing that you understand the information and you're able to make a connection to it. Marte, I was just thinking about how you can apply it at home as a parent. Like, you know, I have two six-year-olds, so I was thinking, how can I help them process this information? So something as simple as, um, why don't you compare last night's dinner to tonight's dinner? Which one did you like the most and why? Exactly. So it just gets them thinking in, at home with those easy things, so then it's easier for them when they come to school. And once they're familiar,